This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So this chapter is going to deal with some further aspects of gains for companies. We're going to look at various different aspects, including what we have here, part disposals, chattels, non-chattel wasting assets. All of these have been dealt with um, in the individual chapter on capital gains, um, on part disposals and chattels. So if you haven't watched that chapter, then you need to go back and do so. If you have watched it, then this is an excellent revision opportunity to bring all those various different aspects back to your mind. So when a company disposes of an asset, but not all of it, the allowable cost needs to be uh, apportioned. And do you remember we used A over A plus B as the fraction? And it's the same calculation as individuals as it is for companies, except that individuals don't get um, indexation allowance. They get the annual exempt amount, which is slightly different. So example number one, we have here um, owns 10 acres of land with an original cost in 2015. Now they've sold two acres and we have a proceeds. Okay, so proceeds, 16,000. And we got to deduct from that the cost. And then we have to do indexation. will give us our gain. So we the cost was 26,000 and it's A over A plus B where A 16 over 16 plus 34 A over A plus B where A is the, pro, um, the proceeds and B is the market value of what remains. So the cost, that is £8,320. Will you please check that for yourself and make sure you're happy with that and how we got to that figure. That £8,320 needs to be multiplied by the factor. And you should have watched the other lectures regarding indexation allowance. I've assumed that you have done and therefore I'm not explaining this any further. So 8,320 times 0.269 gives us 2,238. So our gain at the end of the day is 5,442. Four, you can see that as a nice multiple choice question in section A. And you'll either have a box to fill it in or you will have an A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4, in which you can choose which one uh, you think is the correct answer. So a chattel disposal is exactly the same as individuals, but again, we have indexation. Non-chattel wasting assets, again, the same as individuals, but we have um, indexation allowance. Now, one of the things that we didn't do when we were doing individuals is a asset damaged, lost or destroyed. Now this comes up very, very irregularly. Um, so I'm going to do it very briefly and it isn't the most important. There are layers of importance when it comes to doing tax. There are some things you have to be able to do. And for capital gains tax, you have to be able to do part disposals, full disposals, deals with indexation allowance deal with the income tax for individuals and working out what rate they pay at, how to deal with losses, all of those things. And then there are some things that are less important. Don't waste time learning things that are less important if you haven't already learned uh, the important things. And the important things you'll see by the chapters and the exam techniques at the end of the chapters, which ones are the really, really important ones. So if an asset is damaged, and compensation or insurance money is received as a result, treated as a part disposal. 
A over A plus B, where A is the value of the part disposal and B the market value. So that's almost exactly the same as before. If the insurance money is received, then if the insurance money is not used in restoring the asset as a normal part disposal arises, with the market value of the part retained equating to the value of the asset in its damaged condition. If the insurance money is fully used in restoring the asset, taxpayer can elect to have the proceeds deducted from the cost of the asset for a future calculation, deferring any gain when the insurance proceeds are received. Okay, so let's have a look at example number two. So M Limited or MI Limited or M1 Limited bought a painting on the 1st of April for £10,000. That's our cost. The painting was damaged on the 1st of May 23 when it was worth £50,000. After the damage, it was only worth £25,000. On the 1st of July 2023, insurance proceeds of £30,000 were received but were not used to restore the painting okay not used which is this one this one up above here so let's have a look how that would look in reality in an answer shall we so the proceeds received were 30000 so it's chargeable because as cash has been received it things have been disposed of uh, for for tax purposes so Let's deduct from that the cost. And again, we're looking at A over A plus B uh, times the cost. So the cost was 10,000. And the A is 30 over 30 plus 25. And that's multiplied by the cost, which gives us 5,455 giving us an unindexed gain of 24,545. And don't forget, we now need to deduct from this indexation allowance. And again, we're showing every process all the way along the line so the examiner can clearly see what we've done. So we have the cost times the factor, just to reiterate, so that's 5, 4, 5, 5, now the factor, there we go, 0 0.549 times 0 0.549, always check, never guess, we know what happens when we guess, I get things wrong, okay, so this is our gain, which is chargeable of 21,000, 550. Excellent. Example number three. Daisy Limited purchased a painting on the 1st of April for 10,000. The painting was damaged when it was worth 50. After the damage, it was worth 40. On the 1st of July 2023, the insurance proceeds of 8,000 were received. They were all used in restoring the painting. She's elected for the proceeds to be rolled over against the cost of the painting. So we've got to work out the base cost. Now, if you've done the rollover chapter, you'll understand what that means. The base cost of the painting for the future disposal. So the original cost was 10,000. The insurance that we received was 8,000. Because somebody's got to pay the tax on that at some point. So the base cost is 2,000. And then moving on to assets that are destroyed and lost. Okay, obviously if it is destroyed and lost and you receive no compensation, then that would be a capital loss because your proceeds would be nil and your cost would obviously be what the loss is. Um, don't forget, if it's a loss, you can't have any indexation allowance. Okay, um, 
if there is insurance money received, then that becomes the proceeds um, for the, um, the calculation. The date of disposal is the date the insurance money is received. Be careful, it might be in a different tax year. Um, if it's used to buy a replacement within 12 months, the gain is deferred. If only part or the insurance of the insurance money is used to buy a replacement asset, then some of the gain will be taxed immediately and some deferred. Okay, so let's have a look at the last example in this um, chapter. Example number four. SC Limited bought an asset for 23000 in June 2015. It was destroyed in October 2022. Proceeds of 34000 were received in March 23. Okay, so that, if you remember rightly, so it was destroyed then, but this is the date of disposal when it was received. And they spent £30,000 of that money replacing the asset in June 24. Calculate the gain and the base cost of the new asset. So let's have a look at how that would look in the model answer. So the proceeds is what we received from the insurance company. Um, less the cost from the, so all this is as normal, isn't it? All this is as normal. And in every case, proceeds, less cost equals gain. If it's an individual, then you get annual exempt amount. If it's a limited company, you get indexation allowance. So nothing on there up to that point where the chargeable gain is, is new. Then let's have a look. We're going to look at the notes at the bottom here. The proceeds have only been partially used to buy a replacement asset. Therefore, 4,000, okay, that wasn't, is gained, is chargeable immediately. And 1,250 can be deferred. And that's the amount here. So that's the balancing figure. Because the 4,000 pounds here... Um, is taxable and the base cost is the cost of um, the asset the replacement asset from the question less the gain that has been deferred so just a short chapter um, with uh, different aspects and for individuals the rules are exactly the same um, as they are for companies except the fact that we don't have um, indexation allowance.